Do you live in the US and want fast, fresh and tasty meals without the hassle of shopping or all that hard work preparation? Well, don't you worry. As a lazy man, I've got you covered. Try America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh, and get yourself fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered direct to your door. So why not eat well, stay healthy, and avoid the cost of regular takeout by trying HelloFresh? Just click the link in the description below for a special limited time discount and free shipping as well. Enjoy. Well, this has been a very mixed summer here in Northern Ireland. It started with a brilliant European draw thanks to our counterparts improving the coefficient. It then finished with a scrambling due to squad registration rules. We've got a bit of an old squad for what we need this year. But then we've got the legend returning. King Bobby, one of our third tier heroes, is back and ready to help us today. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 80 and season 10 of this FM23 Builder Nation story, Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. We are back today to start season 10 with what should be a bit of a rollover in European qualifying. And what's more important is the second round, we should be favourites as well. Because thanks to the other sides in this nation, we have had a real boost to the coefficient. Northern Ireland is on the way up. And despite not achieving a great deal ourselves, we are big beneficiaries of it. We have though got squad registration issues domestically. We'll talk about the summer transfer window in a moment. And of course, we've got a returning third tier hero who we've waited a number of years to be reunited with. So lots of interesting summer transfer news, a few missed targets that would have solved our problems, but we'll get to all that later. If you're looking forward to a big 10th season as we still chase our first domestic title, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let's go and have a look at what I mean. We'll have a look at the European draw first. Then we'll go and have a look at the summer and get into our first leg of our first qualifier. So let's start with the European draw, which is very good for most of us. In fact, we are at home to Trepen of San Marino. Glen Torren are at home to Voluntari of Romania, which is a bit trickier. But then Lan are also playing against San Marini's opposition. They have got Folgore and should be heavy favourites in that one too. Both Lan and Linfield are spending money on wages and transfers already this summer. They've done one swap deal between the two of them and they're now both signing good players from the top level of English football. We're talking like Championship League One. They're getting players in who are Northern Irish, who are full internationals and who are on good six-figure sums as well. It is a real impressive feat. But let's have a look at Linfield's draw as well. They have had a pretty good one in the Champions League. They won 4-0 at home to Kosovans Drita in the first leg. And again, they look like they're going comfortably through. In the second round, if they get through, they face Cluj of Romania. But if we come back to the conference and the second qualifying round, this is where the real big news comes. Because if we get through, we face either Breederblick of Iceland, who are okay, but probably not any better than us, bar a goalkeeper, or Foller Esch of Luxembourg, who we would expect to beat. For Lahn, if they get through, it's a little bit trickier, but it is a winnable game against Viborg a club that we know very well from FM22, linked to that story up in the eye above, which was such fun. Glen Torren, if they get through, very interesting one. They get Kyra of Kazakhstan, so arguably their second qualifier is as easy as their first. It's just whether they can get through either of them. For now, though, a real path to the third qualifying round for us. Some real improvements in the squad, albeit we've not got that big ticket item we were looking for. And due to some of the registration issues, we've had to be a bit careful. So let's go and have a look at the summer so far. If we start with the transfers in and out, there's some big ones potentially on the horizon. Now, the middle one here, Tom Robinson, is coming in purely because he's under 21. And it means he can be a backup in the squad without taking a squad registration place. That means we can then sell a Barry Bagley or someone like that, hopefully make a little bit of profit. But Tom Robinson, at 20 years of age, is a really good player. Great personality, basically at first team level already. Very similar to Sean Daniels in truth, and he's got that resilience in him. So I'm looking forward to seeing if he comes in from Brackley. He could be joined by Cameron Goss, who would be the best centre half at the club. He is a real gem. Not got the composure, but physically outstanding. Technically very good. Positioning's great. Again, decent personality. Bit worried about him trying to play out of trouble, but we'll get rid of that quick enough. For him, though, it's one of the two positions we wanted a big, solid upgrade. Him and a striker is what we wanted. We had to give up the striker because of the squad registration rules, but this one, 
I feel we could get over the line this year. And one out of two ain't bad at this level. Let's go and have a look at the transfer history though, because this year, only one player leaving the club really. Ben Williams goes to TNS. Been out on loan a couple of years now. A bit of a club legend, did so well for us. But he's not really at the level now. So he goes off to TNS for £13,000. And we enjoy the money. It's going to pay for Robinson up front. If we go back to the end of last year, two players in, sorted a couple of problems out. And going out of the club, one is a like for like. You know where Bobby Harvey plays. Jim Wood left in his place. A year on loan at Balamina may well do him the world of good. We'll see how he comes back. We'll either move him on like we did with the likes of Ben Williams. Or we'll keep him and he'll become first team level. The other two that went out on loan were youngsters. Philip Baxter, not really improved personality wise. Tennant Dykes, he is coming back pretty impressive now. Him and Hazeldine went out on loan last year and they've come back much better players. So we're going to keep an eye on him. He's got decent potential. Hazeldine, if we find the right loan, we'll let him go. But for now, he is in the first team squad too. But the two that come in, one of them needs no introduction. Let's start with Bobby Harvey. Left us for Larn during our title winning season in the third tier. And he comes back many years later. He's just as good as Wilson. He's better than Jim Wood. Is an upgrade to the backup team. And eventually he might be first team level because he's still got potential. He's still a very good player. He's played over 200 games at the top tier. And he's coming back to us now. Played 13 games for us in the third tier. It was good. Was developing. Improved at Larn. And now he comes back. And to be fair, for a right back, his average rating has been very good. So looking forward to working with him again. And then on the other side at fullback, we lost Stephen Walker, whose loan ended, of course. So we got another guy in on a free from Larn. Patrick Kennedy is 23 years of age, not the best in the tackle or the cross, but otherwise very good. Again, an upgrade on what we had as a backup, and it just gives us a stronger squad overall. He did come in because we missed out on a big target, and to be fair, we've also missed out on one on the left-hand side of midfield, where we could do with a player. We'll look at why in a moment. I'll show you the ones we've missed out on very quickly because they are pretty interesting players. So the left back that we missed out on was called Bally, he chose Derby County instead. 18-year-old Jamaican, not the best personality. But I think you can see why we wanted him. He would have been a starting left back for sure. And he wanted a contract about 400 quid a week, which would have been a bargain. If we go and have a look at the other one we missed out on, probably even more annoying. An 18-year-old left winger from Scotland, a youth international with bundles of pace and agility, loads of flair, good technique, like to get forward, but he chose Oxford in the end where he'll sit on the bench, earn twice the amount, and probably not develop as much, which is annoying, but you can understand why he's done it financially. The reason he was so important is that Brian Farmer has said he's leaving at the end of his deal. He's one of the few we couldn't get tied down. He wants to leave the club for a bigger team as well, and we have agreed that we will sell him if we get an offer of 210 grand. Now, for me, that's a good deal if we get it. We can get a sell on even better. But he is still one of the best players at the club. And it is one of the positions we have the weakest backup. Now, the reason we can't let Lewis Scott go as the backup is because for the Champions League or the Europa Conference, we need him as a homegrown player at the club. Him and now Morgan Griffiths are the only two in that category at first team level. So we can't afford to lose them just yet. I'm not sure what we do on the left wing if Varma goes. But equally, for now, we've got two players we can't register in our senior squad. So if we can swap Robinson for Bagley, that's one done. But then we've still got to find another from somewhere. I was looking at what we did a couple of years ago with Ethan Ross, maybe getting a young backup keeper and then playing the other one, Murphy, in the Cups. But again, it's a bit of a gamble. We don't know if we can do it. We've got Harley Jones throwing his toys out the pram about the training facilities. There's always one a year. And more importantly, we've got upgrades in the staffing as well. So let's go and have a look at those very quickly. A few people coming into the club. The first of which is a new coach, Tiernan Mulvena, actually came via a job advertisement, which we haven't had for a long time in terms of recruitment. They're normally through the vacancies in the backroom meeting or people that are getting upgrades within the club. But this guy, probably one of the best I've ever had via the job advert. Really good tactical coach, great motivation. Another one who's a really good personality and good to have in a club. Big history at Dundalk, has played elsewhere as well and lots of experience in Northern Irish football. Really happy to welcome him in. On the scouting side, we've upgraded a bit as well. New chief scout in Harry Chapman, 12 for judging ability, 10 for judging potential, an awful lot more to do as well, having retired from Bradford. And then looking further down, we bring in Akil Wright as a scout, 11 for judging ability, 12 for potential, 
Again, first job after retiring from Weymouth. But overall, we've got to be pleased with where we are. We've done most of what we needed to this summer. And if we can get that midfield exchange done, if we can then find one more gem, I think we're in a really good place. So I'm looking forward to the season. As we mentioned at the end of last season, we're going to be changing to a bit more of a positive mentality. We're going to keep everything else in the style and the way we play the same. We're just going to try and be a bit more front footed. Let's go and get into the first leg of this big qualifier in Europe. We'll see how the other Northern Irish sides get on. We'll then have a quick recap of what Lana and Linfield have done in the window so far. Because I don't think we're going to need to show both legs of this. Let's go and get through the team selection. You've seen it briefly already. It's a very good side. It should be dominant. But the crowd is not getting any bigger for our first European qualifier. Where possible, and we've got not much between players, I've gone for the younger option of the two. So instead at centre half of going for Cooper and McClelland, we've gone for Jones and Kean, who are slightly younger with a bit more potential. I have gone for Jonathan McElhatton up front. I'm going back to him as first choice because he's more reliable when we played them over a season. He's also less injury prone, which is crucial too. And it means our 11 for today is Neil Kane in goal. We've stuck with the original fullbacks for familiarity. Bell and Wilson are those. Jones and Kean at centre half, as we mentioned. Daniels and Whitehall, no surprise in midfield. Morgan Griffiths, number 10, Huarte and Varma on the wings, and Jonathan McElhatton up front. The good news is, and I didn't show you it while we were there, most of the players are now tied down to new deals. A few of them have taken a bit of a pay rise, but Morgan Griffiths now two and a half years with Curtis Bell, most of the rest up to two years, and then one or two like Wilson and Pardy would only extend by six months. But if it weren't for the Brian Varma fiasco, I'd probably be ecstatic. And if we could have got one of those two youngsters in, I would have been over the moon. Not to be, let's get through the team selection and into the first leg against Trapen. I'm expecting a comfortable win. Well, I'm sure as you can imagine, despite loading in lots of extra leagues in recent seasons, it's not had much of an effect on San Marino because maybe a few more Italians in the game, but other than that, it's not going to improve the standard dramatically. It is a game you would expect the Northern Irish side to win anyway, not to mention the many years of progression the league's now had. So let's go and get into the first half. McCullhatton is the new vice captain at the club after Jim Wood left. So let's get through the tunnel. Let's go and get positive. You're already getting the tunnel interview with the sponsors behind as well. That's just making me want to take away. That's the problem. Into it we go. It's going to be a big game here. Let's get through the kickoff in a very sparsely populated Windsor Park. Loving the animations. I love everything about it. Let's go and get into the first half. Fingers crossed it's going to be a big win. Well, early corner for Sean Daniels. The dominance coming early doors as Jones heads in for 1-0. This is going to be a walkover. I want to show this first leg. We'll get the second out of the way. And then it's all on the second qualifier, which again, we should be winning. As Sean Daniels has a free kick. If we get Robinson in, the way the scouts have rated him, Daniels could have a fight for his place this season. That free kick hits the woodwork. Jones keeps it in though. And he goes back to Curtis Bell. Can't find the cross, but early doors, it looks good. Lahn still nil-nil at the minute. We'll keep an eye on them. I think they're playing away first, so if they can just win the tight, they'll be comfortable. As Bell gets the ball on the left to Jones. Lovely football again. So dominant. Windsor Park. The pitch is beautiful in summer. And McElhatton's been put in by Whitehall. And it's 2-0. Archie Whitehall making up for the fact that he got that crucial red card against Glen Torren. They are the fourth side who made it into Europe. And Whitehall makes up for it with a good assist. We should be through already. Lahn still nil-nil, Glentoran still nil-nil, but here we are absolutely ruthless. As Kean shot his save, McElhatton across the line, out for a throw on the left. A dominant display. It's been so good. Lahn have got the lead already. Good start from them. Daniels puts the corner in. Jones just over. How many are we going to get? I'm predicting six or seven here. I don't want to get arrogant, but they've offered nothing. As Kean heads away again to Wilson, keeps it in on the right. Back to Kean again at centre half. No pressure on us there. And to be fair, it just shows how far Northern Irish football's come. You look at the coefficients for the nation, we're up into the top 30 now. So from next year, Lahn or the second place side will be in the Europa League. We've also got the fact that the league reputation has gone up by 10, is now above the likes of the Scottish Championship. And it's just a tiny bit behind League One in England and the Irish Southern Republic Premiership. So it's definitely making progress. It's into the top 50. And Northern Irish football is on his way. And that's before we've made a real impact in Europe. As the through ball here finds McElhatton. Great ball. Rounds the goalkeeper. 3-0 in 20 minutes. Game over. Tie over. And he's now about the coefficient points. Brilliant stuff so far. 
We just need Glen Torren to get one now. And that's going to make it maybe harder, actually. I was about to say even easier. But Whitehall this time is on the receiving end of a dirty challenge. And it leads to a red card for Trepen. Does it mean they're going to sit in even deeper now and make it harder? Doesn't look like it. McCallhatton completes his hat trick already. 4 0 in 23 minutes. And they're sitting deep, but we've got the better physicality. And it's really working for us here. It's a rare free kick and foray forward for the visitors. Headed away easily. Bell finds Poate. Now look at the counter. Big ball for McCallhatton. He gets down the right. He's got two in support. Might not need them. Here goes alone. Shots over the bar. Little bit greedy there. But we'll forgive him after he's got his hat trick. This is a goal kick from the visitors. Long downfield. Keon wins the header for Whitehall. The good thing here as well, the second leg we can rest people, give everyone a chance to improve in Europe and get our new fullbacks back in the team for the first time. Particularly for Bobby Harvey, second debut will be good. What's also great on the bench today is we've got Hazeldine and Aitken, the star of last year's youth intake. So both of those could come on. As Mucklehatton's in, it's 5-0. It is an absolute dream for us. Brilliant from Mucklehatton. And I think he's justified in being first choice striker. 5-0 up. Lana 1 up. 2 up now, in fact. They're going strong as well. As we've got a corner kick to Jones. Hits the woodwork. McCallhatton's down. Whitehall off the line. Should have been 6. It's brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. Keon finds Jones. Shoots from distance. Harley Jones has scored a tiddler from 30 yards. It's gone under the keeper. It's a really poor goal. But he's now on a hat trick as well. The left centre half is on a hat trick. Five minutes later, we're back with Daniels. This could be double figures. Kean heads across goal off the woodwork. McCallhatton gets it back to Daniels again. Chance to cross for McCallhatton. Inside, it's cleared away. It's backs to the wall stuff. The 11 v 10 is working for us. Poate crosses to Varma. His shots at Toka Kelly. I'm kind of hoping he has a good tie, to be honest, because I want his value to be reached. It's a good deal for us if we get it. Varma loses out, though, in possession here. Canini clears downfield, but they've got nothing. And Kean finds Whitehall over the top. Down the left goes McCallhatton. Was he onside? Crosses for Griffiths. It's headed away. Back out to him again. Crossing for Griffiths. Turns. Oh, it's over the bar. Can't miss a chance like that. It stays 6 0. It should have been 7. It's a corner kick again for Daniels this time. To the back post to Jones. Harley Jones has got a first half hat trick. Four for McCallhatton. Three for Jones. 7 0 distillery. Well, it's not over yet either because Daniels has got another free kick. We've played the three minutes. Corner kick, sorry. Jones in. Gets his fourth for the day. This is the most remarkable thing I've seen. They can't compete physically in the air. So Jones is just towering above them. He scored four goals in 45 minutes. What we'll do then is we'll take off Callum Wilson for Hazeldine. He'll go in at, I think, centre half. And we'll put Kean out to right back. And then in attacking midfield, Griffiths can have a rest. He'll be replaced by Aitken. The two youth players are on. Then at the hour mark, we'll think about bringing on the two fullbacks for their debut or second debut in the case of Bobby Harvey. But half time, two changes made. Youth players coming on. What a display. What a luxury. It's 8-0 to the distillery. We're just looking elsewhere as we're back with the ball again. Lana have got another. Huarte releases Whitehall. Into Aitken. He's won a penalty, has he? Oh, he has. David Coote awards it. Penalty kick to be taken by McElhatton, chasing his fifth goal of the day. And it's won by David Aitken, the new youth player. McElhatton up. Oh, it's an awful penalty. How on earth has that gone in? Five goals in one game. He's not going to care. But it really should have been saved. Well, the first bit of bad news tonight. Glen Torren have fallen behind at home to Voluntari. Lana going to make up for it with us, but it's not the best bit of news. As Bell carries the ball forward here. Down the left to Varma. Gets to the byline. Cross is blocked, but Varma will get there again. I could bring Mark Wilson on up front, couldn't I? Get him a couple of goals too. As Daniels picks the ball up to Jones, he can carry it forward. We could leave McCallhatton on on the right, so he's still got a chance as he gets in there. If he scores his double hat-trick now, it won't matter. Headed away by Cavalli. No, chests it back to his keeper. That's bold. Daniels wins it back again, though. Poate gets it on the right wing. Back to Hazeldine, just to get the youth player a touch. I like that. Picks it up again. Big ball forward. He could be an assist the way we're going. It's out to the right to Poate. To Aitken. Chance to score his first. Oh, what a moment for the lad. I know he makes it 10-0 against the worst opponent we'll ever face. But David Aitken has scored the youth player. And he'll probably get a start in the second leg. A brilliant effort. An hour gone. Now let's make some more changes. Bobby Harvey on for Kean. At left back, it will be Bell off for Patrick Kennedy. And in the final sub, we will do it. Wilson on for Puarte. 
and then out to the right McCall Hatton. Five changes made, half an hour to go. Can we get to 15? That would be nice, as it's a free kick for Daniels on the left again. Big cross in. Jones is up. Headers in. He scored his fifth. Harley Jones has scored five goals in a game. It's utterly ridiculous. It's 11-0, and the centre-half has got five of them. As Avoli throws in from the left, you know I've done as much as possible to make this realistic, but this is getting a bit silly now. You would expect a 4-5-6-0 win, but you wouldn't expect every header to be lost. You wouldn't expect every chance to go in, and you wouldn't expect every pass to be missed. I know they went down to 10 early, but this is silly. As Aitken wins it again, could he get another? He's in one-on-one. -on -one. It's a poor shot. Should have done better with it, really. But we can forgive him on his professional debut. Because it's a goal kick. Quarter of the game still to go. How long is this episode going to be? Because there's about a thousand highlights. Tucker Kelly will take it. Out to the left back. It's not a good ball. McCall Hatton nicks it on his double hat trick. In he goes and he gets it. 12-0, 6 for him. And he goes back ahead of Harley Jones. I bet he didn't think he'd be competing with him today. 12-0 distillery. What do you say? We've done what we can. Maybe this is a sign that the new positive tactic will work. Maybe it's a sign that this is the worst opposition in the world. They've had their first good chance of the game. They've put it wide. But it's a shot. 40 shots to one. They're making progress. Lana 6-0 up in San Marino as well. So maybe the San Marinese League is just that bad. I've done the San Marino challenge many times before. It's not a great standard to start with. And us and Lana are both proving that tonight. As Bobby Harvey heads away. Farmer brings it down. Can he add to the score sheet? We need him to do well. Make sure you get that transfer, son. Down the left, he goes to Aitken. He gets to the byline. Across the box to Wilson. He gets his first of the night. Mark Wilson makes it 13. And both strikers are off the mark now. Excellent work from him. Maybe disappointing. Took him over 15 minutes to score. Well, one disaster is coming because Glen Torren have gone 2-0 down. They are going out of the first attempt. But otherwise, this has been a glorious night. For Distillery, the best night since we took charge. For Lahn, just as good away in San Marino. And in the second leg, we can rest a few and we can enjoy the night because it's 14-0. Wilson has scored a second. And I actually played difficult friendlies to prepare for this. We played Glen Torrent, Linfield and Coventry. And we didn't need to. We should have played the amateur sides as a warm-up. Free kick for Trepen. Given away to Muckle Hatton who can bring it clear. I said, can we get 15? We're one away with five minutes to go. Big switch to Varma. They're all over the shop. And here we come down to the left. You've got Kennedy overlapping the new boy. Varma doesn't need him. He skins his man. Gets to the byline. Cross for Aitken. Oh, he scored two on his debut. I'm really pleased for him. This is an experience that will help him massively. For Trepen, not quite so much. 15-0. 7-0 for Lan away in San Marino as well. The San Marino sides are the best we could have drawn. And both us and Lan have taken full advantage. Between us, 22-0 tonight. The only problem is Glen Torren because they have gone 2-0 down in the first leg, but us and Lana through. And the second qualifier, well, hopefully it'll be a bit trickier. Harley Jones man in a match. He managed five goals, just one behind McCall Hatton. And great to see Aitken get a couple on debut. So what we're going to do, as you would expect, is get through the second leg. I don't think there's any jeopardy in that. Then we will return for the second qualifier. If it's the Icelandic side, it will be a bit trickier. We're going to come back for that tie. We'll see if there's any more transfer news. Hopefully, that young player Tom Robinson will have joined us. And then if Cameron Goss comes in as well, we're going to be one hell of a team this year. If you did enjoy that one, the most emphatic start to the season we'll probably ever get in this save, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments what you think of that performance. I've done everything to make it realistic, but the Sam Aranese League is just not competitive. We will hopefully get a better one in a second tie. I'll show you the nation's transfer work next time because I get we're a bit pressed for time here. If you want to stay up to date with the season and see how far this qualifying run goes, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back in a couple of days time with this one, but in the meantime, it's a big episode in the head coach tomorrow. If you missed the current season of that one, it's up in the eye above with the Twitch channel, the football podcast, and of course the blog story as well. And if you're in the US, do check out the HelloFresh link in the description. Get money off your first order, free shipping, and help support this channel too. But I'll be back here in a couple of days time with hopefully a more competitive European fixture. But let's hope the Northern Ireland train keeps rolling. And the coefficient keeps rising. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.